Have you ever scrolled through whichever investing platform you use and found yourself wondering what some of the analysis terminology actually means? Should you take any notice? Is it relevant? And what can it tell you about a potential investment? Well, this is a series for you then, because in these Investing Explained videos, I break down some of the jargon that you might come across in your investing journey and explain how you can potentially use this knowledge to your advantage. Now, you don't really need to be spending the time understanding some of these terms to help you pick individual stocks. You can either pick them blindly without doing your own due diligence, which I wouldn't recommend, or you can invest the hands-free way via index funds, for example, with mutual funds or ETFs. Going down the index fund route means you have thousands of options to choose from. It means your investments are relatively hands-off and they can often be a really low cost way of investing for your financial future. But if you're anything like me and you want to dabble with a few individual stocks alongside your index funds, then it's good to know a few key metrics you can use to analyze your different stock picks. With that said then, let's jump straight into it. So this Greek letter here is the investing term we'll be looking at in this video. It's known as beta. Beta is a way of measuring the volatility and the riskiness of an individual stock price. It tells you how correlated that stock is with the market average and gives you some indication of how volatile it is compared to the market. In other words, is the price of a stock moving in the same direction as the rest of the market or is it moving way off in a completely opposite direction? It's a really good way to tell how a stock typically responds to movements and fluctuations in the stock market. If you're looking at a stock with a higher beta, it means it's more volatile than the stock market and stocks with a lower beta tell us the opposite, that it's less volatile than the market. Now each stock is usually compared to a market index to understand if it moves in line with that index or not. Usually the S&P 500 is the main market index used for beta, but to get any real value from this metric, the market used as a benchmark should be related to the investment asset that you're looking to buy. For instance, calculating a bond ETF's beta using the S&P 500 as the benchmark wouldn't be much use because bonds and stocks are just too different. So you hopefully get the general idea of what beta is, but what does it actually tell you about a stock? Beta is expressed as a number to show how much a stock price moves relative to the index it's being measured against. You can think of beta as a set of scales, whereby a beta of 1 is the midpoint of the scale. If a stock has a beta of 1, then it's in perfect correlation or alignment with the market. If the market shoots up by, say, 20% over a certain time period, a stock with a beta of 1 will also move up by 20% as well. A beta higher than 1 tells us that the stock is more sensitive to the index with greater volatility, therefore tipping the scale in an upward direction. For example, if a stock has a beta of 1.3, that means for every 1% price change in the market average, the stock itself will move by 1.3%. So we can say that this particular stock is 0.3 or 30% more volatile than the market. It's usual to see certain types of stocks with high betas, like those in cyclical industries like consumer retail, so things like restaurants, hotel chains, clothing retailers, etc. High beta stocks make portfolios riskier because they do increase the chance of high returns when markets are doing well. The opposite happens when you have a beta of less than one, which tells us that the stock is less sensitive to the index and experiences less volatility and therefore less risk. A stock with a beta of 0.5, for instance, suggests that the stock is 50% less volatile than the market. So for every 1% move in the market, regardless of whether that goes up or down, the stock price will only change by 0.5%. Adding a low beta stock to your portfolio lowers the overall risk, but also lowers the potential return you can expect as well. Like they always say, the higher the risk, the higher the reward. Stocks in sectors like utilities, consumer staples, and healthcare tend to have low betas because these businesses provide things that people just can't do without, regardless of what the market is doing. Interestingly though, you can also find assets that have a beta of zero. This means that there is no correlation between the asset and the stock market. And cash is a really good example of a zero beta asset because the amount of cash that you have in your bank account bears no relation to how the stock market performs. It's also possible for certain assets to have negative betas. This is where stocks or assets move in the opposite direction of the market, making the relationship an inverse one. When the market is on a bull run, a negative beta stock is down. And when the market is in a slump, the stock goes up. Gold and gold stocks are likely to have negative betas since 
They are assets that usually appreciate when the market declines. I have done a video on the pros and cons of investing in an asset like gold. So definitely check that one out if it's something that you're interested in adding to your portfolio. And I thought it'd be quite useful to quickly run through a real life example of how you can see the beta metric in action. If we take a look at two different stocks that I recently added to my own trading 212 portfolio, Google and Tesla, you'll see that Google currently has a beta of 1.06 and Tesla has a beta of 2.09. With the higher beta, you'd expect Tesla stock to have more extreme price movements than Google because Google is just 0.06% more volatile than the market. In the case of Tesla, every 1% that the market price moves, the Tesla stock will move by 2.09%. And this is exactly what's reflected in the chart. I'll pop up on the screen now. You can see the S&P 500 baseline in the solid green area, Tesla stock shown in blue and Google stock in purple. Because the Google beta is quite close to one, its stock price aligns quite closely with the market. There are some variations, but its general trend is to track the market relatively closely. The price of Tesla stock though is a different story. Because of its higher beta, the price changes are a lot more pronounced than the change in the market. The moves are similar to the S&P 500 in terms of upward and downward movement, but they're way more extreme than the market average. You've got to remember that beta is an average, so on a good day, Tesla usually gains more than the market, but on a bad day, Tesla will often lose more than the market. It's also a measure that can change as market conditions change. So just because a stock has a low beta today, doesn't mean it will have the same beta next week. Let me know in the comments below if the beta metric is something that you pay close attention to when choosing your stocks, because I'd be really keen to know if you use it to manage the level of volatility and risk in your own portfolios. I know there are many other stock pick metrics you'd probably want to use in addition to beta data. That's actually quite a funny rhyme. And I do run through some of them in this playlist here. So check that out if you want to see more. And please be sure to like the video if you found it useful. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.